Hello everyone at Pycology PSC 2021. I'm going to talk about get 3D models of nothing, Python implementation of deep learning based 3D models reconstruction from 2D image. I am Yang Ho. <coughs> uh, let me do a short step introduction. I'm Herman Yang. I'm now a data scientist at Ethos AI. My interest and research field are ML and deep learning application in 2D and 3D computer vision. And I'm also interested in deep learning series such as self supervised learning and adversarial attack. I'm also a four step developer and have some experience in uh, cyber security. I have been speaker at PyCon Taiwan 2021. Seacon Taiwan 2021 and Hikon Taiwan 2020. And I need to thank Huang Yusan and Zhang Zhirong, who also contributes to this work. They are also from National Taiwan University. So, what should you be here or what uh, you will learn after this talk? Uh, many people try to learn Python and do some deep learning works like cat and dog classification or to, or to detect objects in an um, image. But I want to share with you that uh, deep learning can do more. It can be utilized to generate 3D objects. So after this work, uh, you can implement a fantastic deep learning work with Python. <coughs> uh, all the codes are available in this uh, GitHub repository. You can either scan this QR code or type the URL here. Uh, let me stop for a few seconds for you to do this. Uh, with this with this repository, you can easily reproduce everything I mentioned in this talk. And if you do not catch up anything, I did provide a clear instruction and a clear instruction in the readme file, so you can follow the steps and reproduce everything. Okay, let's begin. I will first talk about deep learning in computer vision and then 3D reconstruction by one 2D image. Then, I will explain how to implement them with Python and show some results with this method. The first section, deep learning in computer vision. What is deep learning? You can see the left figure. Deep learning is just statistic, but if you want to demonstrate deep learning to people, you need to call it artificial intelligence. For a right figure, if you try to do some research related to deep learning, you will also find that it is nothing but linear algebra, probability, and statistics. So deep learning is mathematics. Many people are confused by this term. Deep learning, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning, and machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. They have some relationship. They are different. But what should we call it deep? You can see that the layer go deeper and deeper in this popular deep learning platform. So that's the reason. <coughs> um, so what actually deep learning is? It is nothing but a nonlinear function. We can input x to the deep learning model, uh, which can also be called as a neural network model. And the model will output y. Uh, the model itself can be regarded as, as the following formula. The neural network model is F theta, 
which indicate the neural network model with parameter theta. We input s to this function, and this function will output y. So the, fun the function f theta means the distribution of x to y. Uh, what is to train a model super fastly? Given data x label y pair, we want to find f theta to fit the data pairs. But we need to define fit. Here, we use loss function or objective function to define fit. For example, the L1 loss, we just to calculate the absolute error error between the output value and the ground truth y. And how could, we up, how could we update theta to make the model fit the data? Let's gradient descent. How to apply deep learning to control vision? Imagine that the input x is one image, and the model output where the cat in, the, in this image has, open, has mouth open or closed, and that's it. There are many tests in computer vision can be done by deep learning. For the image level tests, input an image and output a value. Here are classification tagging, imagery retrieval, people identification, illegal image detection. Dance tag means input an image and output an image. For example, some semantic segmentation, deep estimation, serious detection, and decompression. For the sparse text, we input the image and output something like boundary, boundary bars. For example, post estimation, best recognition, instant segmentation, and object detection. There are also some tests related to uh, time series. For example, we input a video and want the model to predict the action or do video analysis. This is a summary of paper submission of CVPR uh, 2021, which is the tier one conference of the computer vision field. You can see that most of the paper are related to 3D computer vision and the 2D ones are somehow out of that, out of the debt. So, how to apply deep learning in 3D computer vision? Oh, it is nothing but request the 2D image to 3D object. For example, we can request the output Y to a 3D cat object. Uh, input a cat image and the model should output the 3D cat object. This is also the task what I want to share with you in this talk. So the general pipeline for deep learning work can be shown by this figure. We need to prepare the data separates and define the model. And finally, train the model with objective functions. We will implement the model with PyTorch. Here, I list all the required classes they are popularly used in and to implement component for each step. So next session, 3D reconstruction by one 2D image. Uh, 3D objects can be represented by several kinds of formats. The popular ones are point cloud, mesh, uh, volumetrics. But these methods have some drawbacks that, uh, that the general 3D object is not equated enough. For example, the point cloud is discrete, so uh, it cannot be used to continuous, uh, continuously describe the contour of the 3D object. To solve this issue, we will use STF uh, representation to describe a 3D object. <clears throat> the concept is really easy, given, uh, given a position with 
coordinate s y z in the 3D space. The SDF value of this position s y z is the distance between this position and the object. If the if the 3D point is, in, is inside the object, <coughs> the distance will be negative. So you can image that all the 3D points in the 3D space with the corresponding SDF values will extend 3D ball to approximate the 3D contour of the object. So the output 3D object can be much more exquisite as it is not described by the discrete values. It is continuously. There is one previous work which we refer to and extend its concept to a set general 2D image. It is a little bit complex, but I will try to explain it. For a static category, for example, car, we have many cars, then we first generate one channel ball embedding for each car and want to want the model to output the SDF value if we query the model with the embedding uh, and concat by a position factor. For each car, we have the function of many positions and their corresponding SDF values, but we don't have the embedding. The embedding and the model is obtained, obtained by end-to-end -end training. So after training, given uh, embedding and a position in the 3D space, we can input to the model and get the SDF value of this position. If we query SDF value with many positions in the 3D space, we can get the 3D model. So, let me use a simple figure to explain this. You can forget the complicated network structure and the loss function in the previous slide. In that, it is just a black box model, which we can input a factor and output a SDF value. First, we generate different channel point embedding for each car, then we can cut position with the embedding and ask the model to output the SDF value. Uh, see the figure below. If the position is here, the model should output SDF value of a level. If it's here, the model should output the SDF value equal to level. If it's here inside the rabbit the model should output a SDF value less than level. Now, you can see there are several limitations of this work. First, the 3D object cannot be obtained by inputting a 2D image, but with the, and because with the 2D image, we still don't have the embedding to input to the model. Also, we cannot generate any 3D object which is not in the training data because the embedding is simultaneously obtained during training. So we don't have embedding for the testing data. It is easy to solve this problem with a two-step solution. The first step is to train for the embedding. Next, uh, for the proof process will do. So we don't need to do this step because it is already done and the model and the embedding can be obtained from the GitHub repository provided by the previous work. The second step to transfer the encoder. We just uh, generate several images of one 3D object from different fields and input to the encoder. We want the encoder output embedding similar to the embedding gained from the uh, first step. Here, we use 
and one loss to achieve this purpose. After training, we can input the image, get the embedding, and query the SDF value with the embedding and different SYD coordinates to get a 3D object. Okay, so the method is simple. We just need to train the encoder okay, and just implement it in Python. And next session, implementation in Python. We use the public dataset ShamNet to demo uh, to demo this work. <coughs> ShamNet provide many 3D objects in math OBZ format, but we need to do some preprocessing. For example, generate many 2D image for one object from different fields. And the corresponding 3D object in SDF format. Also, we need to generate 3D object in PLY format for evaluation. All these projects are already done by us, so you just need to download them from this link. We recommend you to install, uh, install GDOM and download them with this simple command. But if you want to know how we processing the data, uh, the details are all provided in the readme file. After you download the, all the data, please rearrange uh, them uh, into this manner. And then our Python script can read the data correctly. I did mention this work is achieved by two model training phase, while the first phase has been already done by the previous work. So we need to extract the train, train embedding from the previous work. We can extract, uh, we have already extracted them for you. Uh, this embedding are put in the folder of, uh, folder of pre train embedding folder. But you can try to extract by yourself. We provide a script called extract embedding.py. You just need to execute it in a repository of the implicit template. This is the uh, repository of the previous work. And finally, please copy the pre trained model from the previous work and put it into the specific folder. Then you don't need to spend time to train the SDF file and SDF model. After that, please, please execute this command Python, uh, this command, Python train solution1.py to train the encoder. The E argument is where you want to set the login or everything generate during training process and such as uh, model itself and the argument is where you put the data and let's look into trend solution one that p a lot it is somehow complicated but i will explain some core functions here uh, if you want to uh, know the detail please uh, uh, Please go through the script by yourself. Here, <coughs> you can see PyTorch generate general pipeline to train a model. The data set is prepared and loaded into the data loader. We, in, we initialize the encoder and use L1 loss as the objective function. We choose Optin as the uh, optimizer. We use the learning rate scheduler to improve the model performance. After this object are prepared, we can train the model. So for each APAC, we iterate and go through all the data loaded. The data loader will output image and corresponding embedding. We put the image to the encoder and get a pretty embedding 
and use L1 loss to evaluate how much similarity between a quantum embedding and a pretty embedding. And also use this object function to update the model. So after the training, we will obtain an encoder which accept any 2D image and generate the embedding required to put into the SDF function to generate the 3D object. Uh, the, intent, the encoder we use here is a simple ResNet-18 model. We replace the last layer with a full connected layer with a dimension that match the embedding size. And we initialize the weight with the image net pre-trained weights and make all the layer trainable. Now you have done everything. So you can try to generate some 3D object by inputting the testing data. Which are new and uh, which are all new image, they are now in the training data. And just to execute the generate training mesh.py by this command. We also provide a fantastic function for you to generate 3D object by real world data. Please use the command below. Let's look into the generate training mesh.py. You can notice that we get the image and put into the encoder to get the embedding. Then we put the embedding to the decoder, which is the SDF function to generate 3D object. Uh, the decoder contain wrapper and SDF decoder. For the wrapper, the backbone is LSTM layer and one linear layer. And for the FDF decoder, it is just a multi-layer processor which contain a few linear layer. So a lot of the whole concept is somehow hard to understand, but the model is simple. Let me show some results generated by this work. Uh, for the chat category, the first row is the input RGB image. The second row is the Guangzhou, and the third row is the pretty 3D object. Although you can see the 3D object here is just the image, but actually it is 3D object because you can rotate it in 3D viewer. I draw a single screenshot from one view and copy paste here. The right column is the real world image. It is surprised that the model can deal with the real world image. For the sofa category, you can see the general 3D object are requested. Here, we try to input the compressed real world sofa. And you can see the model can capture the basic contour of this sofa. For the plan category, you can see that almost all the components of the plan can be well generated. The performance of the model is really good. Finally, this is a supplementary for you. Because training model with too fast is time consuming, so we try to train the model end to end. Compare these two methods, the two fast training have uh, L1 loss to give model a strong restriction, while end-to-end -end training do not. So we introduced a constructive learning strategy to affiliate this problem and this strategy works. We provide the results generated by this way in the repository. If you are interested in it, please see our uh, GitHub repo. And thanks for your listening. Now it's a QA session. Please feel to ask any question. Thank you very much.
All right. So welcome to the machine learning track Q live Q&A session. And um, my name is Arm, and I'm the MC of the session. Today we have um, Ming Yang Ho. I'm not so sure about the tone, um, but but he can correct me um, after this. Um, he's a data scientist from Ether, um, Ether AI from Taiwan. So um, I actually watched his talk. And it was really interesting. It's all mathematical, but in a way, he's got his code too. So today, I think this is the opportunity for him and for you guys to actually communicate about his work and also your your project with him. His talk is really insightful. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna pass the microphone back to Min Yang Ho to introduce himself and talk a little bit. Give give us a, little, a glimpse of your talk, please. Okay, uh, I'm Min Yang Ho, so the uh, pronunciation is correct. And I'm the data scientist from Ethos AI. And uh, let me talk about my uh, talk. So I have provided all the code for you to reproduce everything here. Uh, a lot of the mathematics is somehow uh, is really difficult, but you can just uh, uh, follow my instruction in the remit and you can reproduce everything. So uh, I think there is no problem from the proper list. So is there any problem from you? Yes. Um, so have we got an audience yet? No, we don't have any spectators, but it does okay. yeah. evening for every time zone. So. I'm the spectator. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I can actually wait, wait here and wait for the question. Yeah, so I also watched your session. What I found is that this is not the kind of talk that we normally find in this kind of conference because it has a lot of mathematical equations and a lot of theoretical aspect. So I was surprised to see a talk like that in here. But it was actually interesting for me because um, because you were talking about taking only 2D data and converting it into a 3D model. So uh, yeah, so it is actually interesting. I would watch it again to understand it a bit more. But yeah, it was really nice. Yes, I, I think the most interesting thing is that you can input any uh, real world image and generate a reactive 3D model, but not all. Uh, because uh, the training data is from the science analysis image, but you can actually input the real world image and generate a 3D model. So, uh, if anyone here is uh, have any interest in it, you can uh, just uh, reproduce the, uh, everything and and generate a 3D model by yourself. Right, and um, I've got a question regarding this. So, um, so in the classical model. You've yeah. got um, so basically you've got a um, an embedding vector for an object, and then you've got a position in three di in three dimensions like x, y, and z. And then yeah. you've got the embedding, and then you can concatenate that, and then you use a black box neural network to predict whether that that position is inside or outside an object. Yeah. But I've got I've got a question regarding this anyway. Um, so. How would you actually um, recognize the embedding of an object? Like, if you don't really know what that 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 picture is, like you don't even know it's it's a chair or it's a table. How how would you actually recognize that? How so the embedding is gener generated by the encoder. So you I need see. to train the encoder to uh, generate the embedding, and um, initially. Uh, I have mentioned that this model is a too fast model. So first, you need to uh, the embedding is initially generated by backpropagation, and mm -hmm. so the embedding is generated by, generated by itself. And for the second phase, you need to train the encoder to uh, uh, make any uh, image to uh, generate the same embedding. So now you have the encoder uh -huh. to generate the embedding. So this is a too fast training. Uh, right. Actually, I, I'm wondering if it can be trained uh, end to end, but mm. uh, it's, um, 
not uh, is infeasible now. Hmm. Uh, that that is a good point. Yeah. yeah in, in the end of my talk, uh, my talk, I have mentioned you can use the constructed learning to uh, achieve end-to-end -end way, but uh, the performance is not as good as the two fast one. Hmm. Yeah. And um, in your talk, you also mentioned a, a novel approach for reconstructing the 3D model out of a 2D picture. Um, could you elaborate more on the um, on the improvement of the classical model a little bit? Yeah, actually, the preference model cannot uh, generate a 3D model by only a 2D image input. Exactly. So this is uh, an achievement, achievement of generate 3D model by a 2D image. And mm -hmm. I, I did not mention the concept of temper temporary here. Uh, if you uh, see my talk, you can see uh, the the GitHub repo is, is named uh, a temporary so unique, but I did not uh, explain mm -hmm. why I use the term temporary here. Uh, I can uh, give a short introduction of a temporary com concept. So you can imagine that uh, if there is a car category, so the generate 3D model, uh, every Im every car image will generate mm. the car models, but there is a little difference between the car. So we just exactly. need, yeah. So we can just have a street car template, and for the small difference in the input, 2D input image and the small difference in the 3D car uh, 3D model, you can see we the model just. Uh, just need to learn the difference between the car category template and the real mm -hmm. 3D model. So the model do not need, does not need to learn a really difficult way to generate the 3, 3D car model, but just uh, have to learn the difference between the 3D model and the template. So this is a mm -hmm. concept of using template. I it can see. reduce. Yeah, you can reduce the difficult difficulty for the model to run. So basically, you've got a stereotypical template for objects, and then yeah. once you can recognize that, like that, that is the object we are looking for. Then you you retrieve the template, and then you just map the two D picture into that template first. Uh, actually, so, the temp the template is uh, also churn end to end. Yeah, ah, I see. Yeah, yeah I. The the temp uh if you have uh three categories like car, plan and and sofa or chair, I mentioned it's my talk. You you uh you need to change the template uh mm. each category for each category. So there will be a model right. for car and there will be mm. a model for plan and there will be a model for sofa. So for I see. yeah, for air, air, uh for air, each template eh, for each each category, you need to change a new model for it. And if you have any two D image of a sofa, you can just use the uh, use the model for sofa and generate the uh, reality three D model. Mm. Yeah. So what I can think of right now is an extension to this work where. Um, the model can also be trained using the GAN, Generative Adversarial Network. And um, the result of that could be quite interesting where you've got a 2D picture of a cat and then it generates like many 3D models of a cat yeah. regarding that picture. And that, that, could be, that could be something, that could be something. So, um, but I think that there's gonna be some obstacles regarding the GAN itself, where um, you've got the uh, generator and the detector or the thief and the police. Um, the generator could be trained using, no, 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 I mean, the detector could be trained using your model, but the generator could be quite challenging mm, in this sense. Or um, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm correct or not, um, the generator could also generate the 3D model 
um, out of the template. And then yeah, yes, I see. Uh, but I think uh, the gun is invisible. Mm, mm. But if we, you need to, uh, but but if you want to change the gun model, you need to prepare uh, many data or uh, design some a uh, good loss function to achieve this. That's uh, because the, yes. uh, the three D models is a uh, really sparse uh, data uh, data structure, not like the two D image. Uh, you can uh, image that the three D model mm. just have many points in a three D three D space. But the street, but the point is really uh, 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 only a few, uh, a few points in the three D space, but not mm. like a two D image. So this, if you want to use GAN to generate three D model, it would be somehow difficult. And I did not see many paper use the GAN model to generate three D models in the uh, even CVPR or ICC. Mm. The tier one conference, yeah. Even so, now, yeah. Cody has a couple of questions in the live chat. Yes. Uh, I'll just pick any of those that are appropriate. Right. Okay. So we can pick some of these questions. Um, so. Yeah, um, I'm gonna pick. Yeah. So let's go for the second question. Does this have a lot of wide application outside of medical fields, like using 2D artists to create 3D worlds in a cheaper way than extensive 3D modeling? Hey, pardon, can, can you repeat the question again? Okay. Um, does this work? have a lot of wide application outside of medical field. And the the, the question um, asker elaborate more. For example, like using 2D artists to create 3D worlds in a cheaper way. Yeah. So so the question is if is there any trend for uh, using this model to help the medical image or mm. Uh, I think uh, uh, actually many, many medical related application use the CT or some some far image, but the C yes. uh, for the CT it itself is a three D model. Yeah, so we don't need to generate a another three D model for the CT, but because mm. it itself is a three D model, and for other image like uh, standing mm. and standing. But I don't think if that is, is necessary for generate a 3D model for a standing. I'm not sure if uh, what what the speak what the asker want to, eh, the audience audience want to ask what kind of medical image is mm. need to generate a 3D model. I'm not sure. That's okay. Um, I think I think we we can foresee some applications out of this already. Um, one more question. Um, the last question is, is error correction quite difficult for, um, uh, sorry, is error correction quite difficult for this model? For example, um, when recreating a 3D model of a spine from an X-ray film. What, what uh, error correction? Yes. Error is correct. it difficult here? Um, not yet, but... Because I the uh, actually I use some metrics to uh, evaluate how the mod, how, what how the performance of the model does and the generate three uh, D model is really uh, close to the ground truth. But actually, mm -hmm. if you want to generate the three D model of any real world two uh, D image, and there is mm -hmm. no ground truth for that, so you you are actually uh, not able to evaluate the performance, so uh, you can just uh, use your eyes to see if it uh, generates well. But uh, as if you want to uh, improve the performance, you need to uh, prepare a lot of data because uh, the uh, actually any deep learning model is just a mapping from a space to a space. 
So you need mm. so you need to uh, use a lot of data to make us bad, not so sparse. So that will uh, so what you can imagine that uh, all the mm, image outside the original training data is just mm. uh, a the first row example, and you want to if you want to improve the performance, you, uh, you need to prepare the training data related to your inference data. So I yeah, so, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, that that's going to be the challenge of yes, it is a challenge. this kind of research. Yeah. So we need a lot of, a lot of data, especially yeah. 3D models. Yeah, if you want to reduce the error, you need to prepare more data. Yeah. Wow, this is eye opening for me. Like this field is eye opening. I'm working on natural language processing. Oh, no, that, that, no. That's why I've, I've got some background in deep learning, but not in computer vision. Yeah, yeah, it's really different, but uh, something to share between these two fields. Yes, there's actually a lot, a lot of um theoretical background that that is shared between the fields. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I think we are running out of time, right? Yeah. Sorry? Is it? Yeah. Have one of the questions. There's no other sessions. Yeah, so okay. Have... So, thank you very much Ming Yang for yeah, your you your your insightful talk and the insightful question and answer session. So, I would like to thank all of the MCs here for um, helping me out in holding the session. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye.